Welcome to the SaconiPrince.com show starring your man, Sacconi Prince. Sacconi is an international recognized motivational speaker that focuses on personal development and leadership development. He does this through thought-provoking keynotes, life-changing books, and powerful group coaching sessions. Sacconi is a transformational speaker, award-winning author, editor of a globally read online magazine, and conference host. Please welcome your host, Sacconi Prince. Welcome to the SaconiPrince.com show. I'm your host, Sacconi Prince. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about our youth and how important it is for us to actually pour into them and help prepare them for the life they are facing. You know, having kids really helps you understand the importance of being able to communicate, the importance of being able to share information and even do it patiently. You have to tell them sometimes over and over and over again, but it's worth the wait. It's worth the patience. It's worth the time you put in because in the end, they'll see just how much you care about them. They'll see just how much you really want them to succeed. They will believe that you have their best interest in mind. But you have to be patient enough for them to get that, for them for it to soak in. Because without that, they'll just think that you're just hammering on them. And most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, we're trying to help them to avoid pain and hurt and heartache. We're trying to position them so that they can actually win as well. I tell my kids all the time, look, you winning indirectly means that I win. So why would I tell you something that's going to cause you not to win? And that's what I know that most parents do. They want to see their children do better than they do. And you know, my father, he said, son, I want you to do better than I did. And I, and I want that for my kids. I want them to actually go further than I've gone, but I want to give them the foundation to do just that. And you know what that requires? It requires spending time. It requires pouring into them. It requires giving a listening ear. It requires being able to not only hear them, but actually instruct them. But they also have a responsibility to take what we said and apply it. And I know sometimes they don't want to do that, but I tell you right now, it is important for them to be able to do just that. Hey, listen, I have a video that's fresh out the vault, which is going to drive this point home even further about the importance of us being able to actually spend time with our children. Here's something else fresh out the vault. Daddy, you, you want to play catch? Oh, oh, okay, okay. All right, I, I understand. Okay, bye. Uh, ma mommy, mommy, you wanna you wanna play catch? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you on the phone. I'm sorry. Um, I'll wait. Hi. I was um I'm waiting on my daddy and my mommy to finish being busy so we can spend some time together so we can we can play catch or. We can go to the park or, I know they're busy right now, but I'm waiting on them. No, no, I don't, no, I, I don't want no drugs. No, no, I don't, I don't want no drugs. No, no, I don't want any, no, I don't want alcohol either. Don't, no, I don't want, I don't, I don't want alcohol. No, no, I, I don't want to take off my clothes. No, no, I'm, I'm waiting on my mommy and my daddy. I'm waiting on them to, to stop being busy, so we can spend some time. Is that your kids? Are they waiting on you? I know being a parent, being a mother or father, being an entrepreneur, just being a working class citizen demands so much of our time. But our kids, they need us. They need you. I know you're doing everything you can to make a difference in their life, to make their life better than yours were. I know that you're giving your all 
but you got to make time for them. You know, somebody once said that children are 40% of our population, but they are 100% of our future. You can't ignore them. I can't ignore them. We can't ignore them and leave them to fend for themselves. Because the world, they're going to offer them drugs. The world's going to offer them alcohol. The world's going to offer them sex. But what they need most is not drugs, not alcohol, not even sex. They need you. They need me. They need our attention. They need our ear. They need our advice. They need our presence. Our children need us. And we need to recognize that before we lose another generation, before we keep going to funerals of people who've been taken out too soon. Our children need us. And I'm not saying that you don't have demands on you because I know I have them on me. But we have to make the sacrifice needed in order to take care of our kids. Because if we don't, who will? You know what the world has to offer them. So what about you? Sometimes you just have to take them to work with you. Sometimes you have to say, well, look, let me show you what I do. Sometimes you need to include them in the process so they can understand and know. And really, they just want to spend time with you. Whether they're playing catch or organizing your paperweights on your desk. As long as you're spending time with you. And you need to learn how to spend time with them. I need to learn how to spend time with them. Don't take them for granted. I remember the story with this one young man. He he wanted to spend some time with his father. And he, he asked him. He said, Daddy, how much do you make an hour? Father was kind of curious as to why is he asking me this? Father said, $21 an hour. Son said, okay, and he walked away. About three weeks later, the son came up with a handful of crumpled up ones and coins falling out of it. And he said, Daddy, here. He said, I said what is this for? He said, that's $21. I, 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 I got it from raking leaves and I got it from cutting Miss Johnson grass and, and Grandma, she gave me $5, but this is $21. I just want to buy an hour of your time. His father's heart melted because he realized that his son just wanted to spend time with him. I'm encouraging you today. Spend time with your children because they need you. And look, this is Sakoni Prince of SakoniPrince.com, where today we're hoping to introduce you back to your children. And look, I ask that you would like and share this video. Share some real estate investing tips that I have. I'm inside one of our furnished apartments right now, and I want to talk about the four components, the benefits of real estate investing. So hang with me. Let me adjust this camera. So the four benefits of rental real estate are how it impacts your income and how it creates wealth. On your income, you have your cash flow and your tax savings. On your wealth side, you've got your debt pay down as you pay down any mortgages or liens on the property and your appreciation as the property improves in value. So we really want to talk about the wealth side today, which is your equity. How are you going to increase the equity on property by paying down any debts on it and increasing the value of the property? Because that spread between those two numbers is your equity and equity equals wealth or your net worth. So. Let me show how that breaks that down. When you buy the property and you come in and let's say $100,000, small little rental home, and over time, that debt goes down to 75 and then 50, 
And then up here, as appreciation happens, it's worth 105, 110, 115, etc. And that gap is your equity. And with equity becomes wealth. When you go into the bank or, or some situation where you need to show what your worth is, you're gonna be able to say, well, I have $35,000 in equity in this property. It's worth 120 and I owe 80. I hope that math was right. Anyway, you can see my point. Now, at times, here's the, here's the risk that people talk about in real estate. There might be a down market. Like we saw in 2008. But if you can hold on to the property, we all know what property has done since then. But during this period, you have less equity, but it may not impact any of your income. Also, you may have reduced equity if you take a loan against the property. And you may take some money out, let's say you take out $50,000 to buy another rental property. But having this equity is what enabled you to borrow that money. See how that works? Now, what you'll find aggressive real estate investors do is they'll use a value add strategy where they'll buy a property at 70, force the value up to 100, and shorten their timeline to get that gap to increase their equity. So what does that do for them? They just bought a, a building for 70, increased the value to 100, and immediately accelerated that $30,000 equity stake they have in it. And improvements could be fixer uppers or improvements could be just better landlording and property management. So everyone has a strategy and you have to find the one that works for you and your market. So my goal with all this is to show you what I've learned, what I am keep learning about, and how to help you get started, get ahead, and find out what works for you. Um, I, I enjoy the process of this. I love making houses, buildings, neighborhoods better than I found them and, and finding that undiscovered diamond in the rough. So whatever I can do to help you continue ours, I'm Eric Oden, and let's go build some wealth together. Welcome back. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to have our guest today. He is Mr. LaRue Finch, but listen, I'm going to let him tell you about some of the consulting that he does. Mr. Finch, introduce yourself. How are you guys doing out there? My name is LaRue Fitch, educational consultant here in Chicago, Illinois. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, within my capacity, I work with school districts, uh, principals around different areas for the priorities of culture, curriculum, as well as instruction. And when I say culture, I'm speaking more specifically on ways that we can increase capacity to get in our scholars to be on or off track academically, to get them to be ready for college and career opportunities. That instructional part is making sure that we support teachers within strategies, those high leverage instructional strategies, so they can build student capacity, so they can understand skills and concepts. And when I talk about, you know, the whole curriculum component, it's making sure that we have a culturally relevant approach to teaching the students in which we service. It comes from a diverse lens. So just working with schools and districts, as well as principals to leverage some of my skill sets that I've learned in education to make sure that we're empowering students for the 21st century. Well, man, that is some incredible and impressive work. And we're so thankful and grateful that you're actually taking that on. But listen, I want you to tell our audience today, what are some of the things you've done to develop yourself personally? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, phenomenal question. For my own personal development, you know, I focus on the seven habits of highly effective people, right, by Stephen Covey. Mm -hmm. And those areas have taught me a lot, not only in my professional setting, but also pro um, personal setting. Mm -hmm. I can build others up, defining my character, you know, being able to seek to understand and be understood, thinking about leveraging responsibilities and beginning with the end in mind. Some of these healthy habits have developed me in ways that I can't even speak upon, as well as some of the coursework I have taken. Um, you know, some of my skill sets come from 
the college and career aspect of undergraduate studies at St. Xavier University, which is located in Chicago, Illinois, my graduate courses from Chicago State University. And currently right now, some of the courses that I am actually pursuing as I am in the middle of writing my dissertation right now for Chicago State University. As well as being a emergent leader for new leaders for new schools, it has helped me personally develop the skill set to coach other teachers, to provide them with that immediate feedback, to coach and develop them and ask those different high leverage instructional types of questions, whether we were talking about advocacy style questions or inquiry based uh, line questions, developing others, leveraging so we can make sure our teachers are equipped with that skill set to watch our students matriculate to the next level. Man, the work you're doing is definitely impressive. So listen, tell me how you've taken the stuff you've learned, developing yourself personally. How do you use that to help develop and lead other people? Absolutely. I give a lot of credit to my undergrad studies as well as my graduate courses to help me. Right. They have helped me to be able to coach and develop schools as well as districts. More importantly, working with principals to kind of go through some of their data, looking at their school improvement plan and making sure that we focus on those three priorities I mentioned earlier the culture, curriculum, as well as instruction, making sure we find a growth area within their school building to focus on, whether we're talking about attendance, whether we're talking about students that are being on track, off track regarding district as well as state achievement, or whether we're talking about teacher capacity around different high leverage instructional strategies that they can utilize in a classroom to build student capacity. It's being very intentional, coaching them, problem solving them with them, helping creating smart goals with them that they can leverage the teachers to create goals as well are some of the skill sets that I'm able to develop with the principals as well as schools and districts to watch this go to the next level. Well, man, that is definitely something that I know a lot of people have a challenge doing, but it sounds like you are doing a great job with it. And you know, while you were talking, one of the things that really came to mind was that a lyric from Jay-Z when he said, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. And so being able to actually keep track, you can't fix what you don't track. And so keeping track of that, those sort of numbers really help to put you in a position to improve and to find out why things are, in fact, the way that they are, but how can we make them better? Absolutely. Yeah, listen, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I say I definitely agree with that. And along with that, we use this system, right, that I've created from the seven habits of highly effective people called the four disciplines of execution. It's mm -hmm. a management system to progress monitor. So I utilize that system from a management business sector, and I've actually involved that into the educational realm to help teachers create those meaningful goals, find out ways that we can progress monitor that holding students accountable and making sure that we have data that's presentable and that's inside of every classroom, every hallway within the school building. Wow, that is definitely impressive. Now, I know that there's somebody listening out there saying, man, this guy's doing some incredible things. How can I follow him? How can I connect with him? How can I contact him if I need to? How would they do that? Absolutely. So I'm available at your leisure anytime out there. My website is LaRue, that's L-A-R-U-E-M, Fitch, F I T C H dot com. Please go to my website if you need some support. You can email me directly from there. Also, I have my book that's available as an ebook called Breaking the Education Code. It is the instructional guide for enhancing teacher capacity while we increase scholar achievement. In this book, I talk about those three priorities, which are culture, curriculum, as well as instruction. And unlike some books out there, I have real data that comes from 14 years of the classroom that I've actually been part of. So some of my personal journey, reflections, some of my struggles, and some of my ways that I'm showing you this is how I was able to get out of these hurdles are in this book. So please go to my website, as well as go to LaRue Fitch on Facebook. I have tons of instructional videos that focus on culture curriculum as well as instruction, data conversations, uh, ways that we can have this MTSS, RTI, as well as instructional leadership conversations. So please make sure that you inbox me on my website or go to my Facebook page to view some of these videos within my archive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, listen, I am so excited that you are doing everything that you're doing to help make our teachers more equipped for dealing with our youth. And listen, I'm telling you right now, if you haven't done so already, go check out his website. We're going to put the address on the screen so you can go and see exactly what it is he's doing and how you can be a part of it. And listen, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back.
The wait is finally over for Sokoli's most anticipated book of the year, Leadership That Lasts, passing on 10 solid principles to ensure an enduring legacy. Life changing. Available now in Amazon. Order yours today. Daytime television is about to be turned on its head by the SaconiPrince.com show. The show focuses on personal development and leadership development with one of a kind segments, engaging guests, and information to help you be a better version of yourself. Tune in every Wednesday to the SaconiPrince.com show. Please welcome your host, Sacconi Prince. Hey, you want to be my new best friend? Listen, grab your phone and click on your iHeartRadio app. Then go to where it says search and type in Next Level Leadership Summit with Sacconi Prince. Hmm. Okay, they don't have it under that name just yet, but the link says iHeart.com slash podcast slash 269 dash. Look, never mind. I'm going to put the link around this video. and You can click on that link and you can listen to my podcast on iHeartRadio. And don't forget to subscribe. Man, this is great. I'm running with the big dogs. Today's episode is brought to you in part by. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Nanny Night Night. Nanny Night Night is a free podcast that you can listen to on Anchor.fm. It's a podcast to help put your toddler to sleep. Nanny Night Night is bedtime stories for beautiful souls. You can click on the link around this video or go to Anchor.fm slash Nanny Night Night. And good night, the old lady whispering, hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. And good night, beautiful little souls. Man, that interview with LaRue Fitch, I'm telling you, brother's doing some amazing things in Chicago. 
But listen, I don't care where you are. You have an opportunity to pour into a young person around you. There's so much you can model for them and so much you can tell them if they're willing to hear. And that brings us to our last word, which found in Proverbs chapter one, verse five. And the word of the Lord reads, a wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. If you're going to be wise, you have to have counsel. You have to have somebody that you can talk to and bounce things off of somebody that has more experience than you or somebody that has gone through some things that can even tell you what not to do. And so even with our youth, we have to position ourselves to where we can be those kind of counselors to them, where we can pour into them. And that's what I love about what Brother Fitch is doing. He is actually helping teachers to actually prepare to pour into the lives of young people. So that's what all of us can do. We can do just that. We can be that kind of instrument, that kind of tool to be used to help help a, the next generation, to help a young person, to help them become a better version of themselves. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do and I love what I do, because I want to see you succeed. And listen, if you haven't done so already, if you want to donate to the show, you can do so with our cash app, which is shown right here. Or if you don't have cash app, just a cone, I only have PayPal. That's fine. You can use that as well. And we look forward to actually having you to contribute to this amazing show because we're going to bring you some more guests and some incredible segments that you don't want to miss. And listen, we ask that you would tell somebody about the SaconaGrants.com show and tune in next week for another exciting guest. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye.